Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining, being on time. Chef to me, as Joe was so kind, kind enough to introduce me. And we are here to do something with dates. No more with dates, right? So I'll tell you a little bit about myself, then we'll go into a little bit about the date, and then we'll do the fun stuff, a little bit of entertaining and a little bit of time. Would be, and my background actually is in graphic design and early childhood education. And um, the opportunity to have a client for a freelance graphic design and it was a restaurant. And it opened up this whole world of food for me. And it's just kind of like been a passion ever since. So um, right now I teach culinary arts in the high school in Philadelphia. I also have an online meal prep company and I do live demos like this and in schools and also online. Um, I focus on the conscious, consciousness of um, nutrition with ease, so you can eat good, but it doesn't have to just be a solid. You know, it can be all kind of various things, like the grains, it's all how you put it in it. It's good food, good for you, but it doesn't, you don't always have to know what's in it. Because I have children, they don't have to know everything that's in it. You know? So um, today we're going to take the date. And the date was the choice of the date was like Joe said, this was a part of a bigger project. Um, in the path to Islam. And that's basically talking the story of Islam, but more so through the lives and families of African-Americans right here in Philadelphia, which has a very rich African-American Muslim culture. And so they brought me along to do something food-oriented, food, you know, brings people together. And I'm thinking, what do I do? Because truly, there isn't truly a halal food. There really isn't truly a Muslim food, okay? The thing is, you do have some criteria though. For one is there's no intoxicants, okay? And there's no pork. And the meat should come from a source where the animal was treated properly, fed of good things and slaughtered in a humane way with the mention of God. So that being the, that being the only premise, the sky's the limit, you know? So that left me very varied with what to do. So I said, how about the date? Because the date is one true ingredient, one food item that every Muslim knows about. Whether they like it or not, they know about it. Whether in regards to what country they're from, how they came to Islam, they know about it. And the reason why is because that's what suggested for us to break our fast with during the month of Ramadan, which is one of the five pillars. So every Muslim knows about the date. So I chose the date. And then I said, you know, I said it to Joe. He's kind of like my secret manager. Uh, so I said it to Joe. I said, what do you think about the date? And then he took it from there with the title, hence, No More Boring Dates. And kind of related to a date. So it was really cute, it stuck, and here we are. So first we're gonna do uh, a very simple like date caramel. And that's kind of like, we're gonna branch off from there. I'm happy to be today in this culinary, this uh, state of the art kitchen because I travel all throughout the city doing this fabulous program uh, all throughout the summer. And so we were walking to libraries that didn't always have a kitchen, maybe didn't even always have a sink or anything like that. So I chose, that was another reason why the date was a good choice because I, I could be versatile. The date caramel was something that was made no matter where we was at. But here today, we could take it up a notch and make two other dishes too. So we're gonna make kind of like a, a, a pasta. We're gonna use the date inside of the sauce and then we're gonna have a kale crunch salad and we use the dates there. So I'll kind of show you the date in all different types of textures, okay? So right here, we're gonna take our pot, our pot fill it up with some water. What we're going to do is we're going to take the dates that are already pitted, and I'll talk to you about what pitted means in just a minute. I'm going to put these in here. So anybody in here, have you ever had a date before? How about this? How about any, anybody have never had a date? Never. Oh, you're in for a surprise. And I can't wait to see your expression. So when you come up to have the eating session time, which is the best part of the show, I want you to at least try to date in its regular natural form first, okay? Even if you have to share it, because you might not like it, I don't know. And then try all of the things that I did to it. So you'll truly be an answer to the question that I take this date to another level. I did that with a group of children at a camp. 
You know, children are hard critics, hard critics. I love them though, because what they say is true, you know? So I had them taste the date while um, before we did anything. And they was like, I had it before, it's disgusting, it's disgusting, you know? So it was, just, it was very graphic. And so they tasted it and then they tasted it again and they were like, it's a 10, it was great, you know? So that, you know, that showed me that, you know, you, you can make, you can, you can change people's thought process of things, so. Um, so we, while that's coming to a boil, I'm going to uh, slice up some onions here. And anybody here that just works from the library or you actually truly plan to come to the event today? Really plan? That's impressive, right, Joe? Like, I like it. No, we're, we're excited because literally there was like maybe one person at the events, but this is impressive. So thank you. All right, so the onion is, I'm just going to get this prepped up because this is something we are going to then use um, inside of the solid. And what type of things, is, if you think, trying to think of things that are good to pair the dates with, you think of the date as a, something that is truly sweet, like high sweet, okay? So um, uh, that being said, you wanna pair it with something that's salty. So that's gonna, that's gonna put that umami flavor in your mouth. And I say that to say that, cooking shows, a lot of times in those kitchens, especially when they're time, they don't have time to taste because they're trusting their understanding of the food and, and what goes together and what, go, and what doesn't go together and what that does in the mouth. And what that does in the mouth, that takes us into some food science. That's truly true. What happens in the mouth is something that can happen whether you're tasting the food or not. And usually they know what they're talking about because when it comes to the judging table, you know, they like it. So you want to go, you want, you're looking for a savory taste and that's the saltiness that will give you that. And that being said, I didn't really give a history of the date. So the date is other than the two suggestions for Muslims during the month of Ramadan. Of course, it's a, it's, a, it's a food that's true to those climates in the African desert type of areas like um, Egypt, Arabia, places that don't have a lot of water. Okay, so this is why this is something that's common. So too is a fig, very common and like very old, these fruits can last under very harsh conditions. Um, the date itself has benefits beyond your, your imagination, further than just being um, uh, full of fiber. So it's definitely good for intestinal concerns. But one of the reasons why it was used, thank you for joining, good evening. Um, one of the reasons why it was used and suggested to eat during the month of Ramadan, because regardless of what year, what time of year it is, because you know the Muslim calendar is a lunar calendar. So that time changes every year. Still, no matter what, you will be fasting at least eight to 10 hours a day, okay? And that is without food and drink, all right? So good evening, thanks for joining us. Assalamu alaikum. So when, when, that, when, that, when, you're, when it's time to break that fast, one, you need to break it with something that's of good sustenance, but you need to be careful of what that thing is in reference to how it's gonna take your serotonin level up, how it's gonna take your blood sugar up because everything has been depleted all day. Okay, so you ever had that experience where you haven't had anything and then maybe the first thing is a donut, you might get a headache. It's a little too much sugar, it's just a little too much, you know? So this is a, is a fruit, is a, it has a good sugar, natural sugar. It doesn't raise your glycemic, okay? And it can sustain you. The fiber is so rich in it, it can sustain you. That and a cup of water and a cup of milk, you will feel very nourished. So that's, that's one of the reasons, main reasons why that was a suggested fruit. That and of course, it was available in consumption. All right, so, um, and I see our dates are already boiling there, so we can take it to the next step. Slice these real fast. Oh, and I forgot to introduce you guys to my sous chef here. This is Amar Clement. This is his first day with me. He's a natural. All right, make sure we can take the lid off of that. So what we'll do is we'll turn that off. Basically what we did with the date, I'm gonna come around 
and show you first how the date looks in its original form. Another thing we did that's important to note, especially if you never had a date. First off, these are called module dates, okay? Very important, very common in the Middle East. Very common if you're going to get dates during the month of Ramadan in Middle Eastern or Desi stores, this is the most common variety, but there's a lot of variety of dates. This is also most common here too. Um, you will see like the, the Dole brand or the Sunset brand in the market. I forget which uh, type of date they have, but it's a little bit smaller. It's not as plump. But the key point is in the middle of a date is something called a pit, okay? Hard like a stone, not edible, all right? So you wanna open it up and take that out before you eat it. Um, and so you will see some packages more so in the market that say pitted on it. That means you don't have to do that extra step. You can eat right out of the bag. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you guys a little visual of how it looks before we uh, boiled it because it definitely is gonna change texture and shape, okay? That's the date there, that's a medjool date. And you can see all those fibers in there too. See, very fibrous. Okay, all right, so now I'm gonna walk around and show you the dates now because we're getting ready to take it up a notch. All right, so we boiled the dates, something simple. We're gonna dump them out here. Now, you see how all these fibers just came out. Look at that, how it broke down. Look at that. And to touch, I, it's hot, but I'm just gonna touch it to show you. Now it's just pliable right to the touch. So you can do a lot of things with it right now, okay? I'm gonna give you a lot of different ideas, different than the ones that I'm gonna to do tonight of what you can do with the date. I'm gonna come around here for you guys. I'm sorry, I missed you on the first step. Okay, that's it now after it's boiled, totally came apart. Okay, just squeeze right at it. All right. Boil with water. That was a good question. Oh, I'm thankful that you said that. Feel free to ask questions. Usually they tell you to wait to the end. The question, questions help me to stay engaged and it helps, helps me sometimes I forget things. Like she just asked a good question, was it boiled in water? And that was an excellent question because you can have fun with the water. Now, I just did it in basic water, but if you wanna, you can also put something like clove or a cinnamon stick in that water. And this water here is totally fine. You can use this water. You can use that as sweetener in a tea. It can be a tea. You can put some, something else in there like a lemon. So these are all the creative things that you can do with this one item, all right? And, and you already know the benefits, okay? So, and if you don't, I encourage you to look it up because the benefits of the dates is, is truly profound. Um, so now we have the date in this form here, okay? And, and on that note, we reference to the liquid. Now we boiled it in just water, plain water, right? But you can, um, I'm gonna use the same water to blend it, but you also can use heavy cream to blend it. And that will bring a very rich flavor. Actually, is anybody in here vegan? I'm gonna do a little bit of both. Okay, so when you come up, you can, you can see that uh, difference there. So we'll take a little bit here and put it in here like that. So what I want you to do is take some dates and just chop them up. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh huh. No, excellent question. So when you boil anything, some nutrients come out, but they come out into the water. So you can use the water. Okay. So that's why I say keep that water. We get ready to use that water to, to finish the process. And it's edible, right now it's edible. The form has changed, the look has changed, but for sure it is edible. And that's why we're just gonna use it to finish it off. But definitely edible from start to finish. As far as I know, the only thing apart about the date that isn't edible is that pit in the middle, that stone. 
and I haven't quite understood or known the use for it yet, but I'm sure there might be something, something like kind of composting or something. Say it again. With the date seeds? Okay. I didn't hear you. Do what with it? Vicar. Okay. So Vicar. Vicar is um kind of like saying salutation or specific dua every time we pray or anytime, anytime you want to. You're saying some specific words. All of it is it's different ways to praise God. That's what it is. So I hope I explain that quickly, right? In a quick sense. That was quick. I wasn't thinking that, but that was good. All right. So we'll pour a little bit on here just like that. All right. And so the liquid that you choose is by eye based on the texture that you want to get at the end. So if you want something more of like a paste, if you're using it in baking, like a crust or something like that, then you want you might want it to be very stiff. If you want it to be pourable, I want it to be pourable right now for you guys. So I put a nice little bit of water in there, okay? So let's just make sure our blender is on tight. Never used this one. So let's see. Plugging it in is the key point, right? Let's start there. Okay, Houston, we have power. Okay, so it's still very thick right now. I don't know if you can see that. I'm tilting a little bit. Thick. I'm gonna put a little bit more liquid in there, okay? Now another idea, well, I'll wait until I'll, I'll say that when I put the heavy cream in. The blue screen top, right? Thank you. So we're going to pour this out. And so now you have, you can call it, you, you, I don't know if you smell it. You know what? I'm going to bring it around and show you. I think it smells a little caramel -y. You know, the flavors that are emitted just by adding heat. Heat does things to too. Heat brings flavor also. So this type of heat is coming from what well, was boiled, but it's also heat being generated by the powder from the uh, blender also. Okay? So that kind of pulverized them. How does it smell to you guys? You saw it? Okay. You don't smell it? All right. All right. Yes. We got it okay there. All right. So let's pour it out now. And so one of the things you can do with this that's ingenious, parents, this could be in place of jelly on a peanut butter jelly sandwich. It already has natural sweetener. I'm going to make one for you to show you. You can taste it yourself. But this is truly, when your children eat this, you are definitely going to be side to the corner like, yeah, I got you because you're eating something really healthy there. Like no sugar, especially compare this to that sugar that's on that label on a jar of jelly and just a tablespoon. Shouldn't be having it. All right, I'm just going to try to get more of it out. And then while I have everything already set up, I'm going to uh, do the heavy cream. I'll tell you about the heavy cream one, another idea. So that'll be here for us. Another idea for the heavy cream one 
is ice cream. What's, what's ice cream made out of? Cream and sugar. Another quick recipe that this paired with to give me that idea is you just take um, condensed uh, sweetened milk, which is nothing but thick sugar, dairy, and some heavy cream. And you mix that together, blend it together so it's a little frothy, frothy and freeze that. You can put whatever flavor you want, vanilla beans, strawberries. That's a very luxurious ice cream, um, similar to haagen okay? Hence the heavy cream. So we're gonna use the heavy cream here. First, we'll put the rest of our dates in. All right. And another thing about this, this is an agent that, that uh, will, has a natural thickening component to it, different than water. So you really might need a, a nice bit of the uh, heavy cream. Because as we're, as we're um, blending it, it's, it's emulsifying a little bit. So it's getting thicker. Okay, so I want it to be pourable for you guys. This blender is powerful. All right. <laughs> okay, so now we have our heavy cream. One. I'm gonna pour some of it in here just to show you and I'll get a larger bowl. Big difference, right? It looks like it's luxurious. I'll get the rest out of there, trust me, when it's time. All right, so it's a little quick pasta. We already have the pasta made. The noodles made. Okay. Okay. And the heat. will tell you that the easiest way to do it at home is you're going to work you're going to work off of the pasta water. Pasta water has a lot of starch in it, okay? So that's the easy way to make a sauce uh, right from the same water. But for the sake of time, I did already uh, pre uh, park pre cook the pasta to make it a lot easier for you. I just want to sauce it. So that being said, I'm going to kind of reconstitute a sauce myself right here in the in the pan for you. And this all we're doing is I'm showing you in your mouth something that's savory and not just sweet, but giving you the concept of how you compare the date and something that's, that's savory too, not just a dessert, okay? So I'll put that in there like that. And we're gonna use the same bowl that had the water in, the date water in here because those juices and things would be nice catching up the side as I'm tossing the pasta. Any questions? What are you guys thinking so far? Yes. The date these days, um, this particular container is at Costco. And um, another place you can get the dates from, they, ShopRite, they do have dates in the market, yes. And most time, most often in the market, they, they might be pitted, but I have seen with jewel dates 
he has a date with Trader Joe's. So the, those are the Medjool too. What were they pitted? No, they weren't pitted. So it's pretty common. You can get them now. You know, in the market, I usually find them like kind of like on end caps. You know, in the in, in the grocery section. I mean, in the uh, produce section, like on, in the same place you would find like apricots and things like that. All right. And again, I'm just taking this. I'm just breaking this kale down a little bit. So it's pliable to the to eating. Pasta. You want me here? this in the pot here and I'm going to do it in layers so we'll put the kale in all we're trying to do is get a little bit of heat enough so that the cheese when I mix that cheese around it'll produce a little bit of a sauce around to coat the pasta all right that's going to give me a little bit of heat there okay Mark we the, the uh, crumbled um goat cheese thank you this is goat cheese you can use, I'm, I'm using this type of cheese because it's, it's mild, so it's gonna melt quickly. It's a soft cheese, but it's also a saucy cheese too. I'm making it, it's already flavored with a little bit of herbs here. And pass me some pepper. I'm using it for what, basically that soft component. It's also a very soft cheese. So it's gonna, and so because we're doing these, this salty item, we don't even really need another salt. So while that's happening, what am I using? The same date water. Okay, I'm gonna use that to reconstitute those noodles. That's gonna bring more flavor. So a little bit of flavor from that date in there. All right, we got our dates in here. All right, that came to a boil now. We are going to pour that right on top. Just mix that around. You can see that. You can see that pasta, the cheese starting to melt in there. It's breaking down almost like a sauce. This is an idea, even if you don't have dates. In this particular dish, you could tell the date is kind of acting more like your protein base. That'll be your truly, truly based item in there. Um, but you can, you see this just, just, just that quickly by using that cheese and a little bit of water. We put in, we, we now have a sauce around the pasta. Okay, so that's our pasta there. If we want to add more kale, you can always add more kale. You can also add some nuts on top if you feel like you want some texture. Now, we're going to put together a quick salad for you. Put the salad in here. So for the salad, we're just going to put a little bit of red onion, and that's for a little bit of bite, a little bit of acid too, okay? And this is nothing special. I'm just putting together a salad. I'm using the date to comp, um, to be like you would use, be using raspberries or something like that or craisins inside of a salad. So the, the dates are replacing that concept because it's gonna give you a little sweetness, a little pop and a lot of nutrition. Okay, and that's what we're going for. We're going for nutrition with ease. You don't have to do a whole lot, but you can still eat very healthy. All right, so that being said, you, you, when you guys come up, I have three vinaigrettes you can use of your choice. And I left these things out there because you can add those as you're liking. We have still the feta cheese in the middle for the nuts. We have um, uh, pumpkin seeds, pepitos. Yeah, those are pepitos. So that's for your crunch. And then we have some crumbled goat, seed, goat uh, cheese. Um, and that is pretty much it for the presentation. Also, what I want to show you guys is the peanut butter and date uh, caramel sandwich. And you can come up and try that too.
we're going to have our sous chef do that. So you can use that sherry knife there. And on one side, you'll put uh, the date preserve, and the other side, you'll put peanut butter. I'm going to get the peanut butter for you right now. Any questions, guys? What's in the blender? Okay. Oh, you was a little late? That's okay. No, I'm going to break it all down to you. You said the magic words. You came just, you didn't come late. You came at the right time. We're going to give you a second little quick show while I'm finishing up for everybody. So basically in the blender, we did, what we did was we took the date. Have you ever had a date? Yeah. You had a date? Okay, that's the first part. That's great. So we took that regular date that you saw as kind of boring, but very nutritious. We put it in some water, reconstituted it, broke it down. And then we put it in the blender. First, we put it in its own water, same water it boiled in. We blended that and we have that to show that's, the, that's what made our date caramel here, which we're getting to make it as a sandwich also to show you that option. Just such a healthier peanut butter and jelly sandwich. All right. So then we took it up another notch and we used instead of water, heavy cream. So this is a more richer, same type of thing. And another idea for this, I told everyone, is you can use this as ice cream. The date would be a natural sweetener, just two ingredients. So you would put that, my suggestion would be, you put it in a glass container, all right? That's gonna freeze real smooth. And it's gonna decrease the, op the option of having a lot of those ice crystals, okay, with a lid. You put that in the freezer and you'll be able to scoop it out. And it'll be the consistency of like a haagen type of ice cream, but you'll tell yourself that you don't have the same amount of sugar in there. All right, thank you. Anybody else, any questions? my dad guys I gotta say it because I'm gonna start laughing I'm gonna start laughing otherwise okay he got me you know so um I, I, I mean I'm, a, I'm gonna be honest perfect I'm not you know I'm, I'm, I'm not a, in a perfect person but I think that a lot of the things that we have going on in our body in our feelings has a lot to do with what we are putting in our mouth so if we can start the story earlier, that's my, that's my job. That's why I enjoy working with children. We can start the story earlier with encouraging children and everyone, but children too, first, to just eat better or, or whatever they're eating is already better. That source is already whatever is available to children. So, so instead of bringing jelly into the house, make some date caramel and keep it in the glass jar. When you're having a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you're going to have a, it's going to be peanut butter, but it's, it's going to be the date preserve instead. So to answer your question, it's just about trying to live and live well, feel good, so I can be healthy and happy for my children, mind, body, spirit. Um, that's pretty much the, the goal behind it, you know, and to put a spiritual piece to it. No people that came before us didn't eat the way we're eating. For one, they didn't have the resources. They didn't have Walmart and all these things accessible to them. So they had to eat what they had. And if you, if you have the opportunity to stay for the uh, session um, that I'm going through the story of Islam and food, you really can kind of really see that. But every, I think that we all could agree to it. And if you travel outside of America to other countries, you will see so much more of the back to the earth concept. You know, I, I remember I was in Tunisia and at that point, because I'm spoiled American, I was um, frustrated that it was only like three fruits to eat, three choices of fruit. Every, Stan had three choices. I'm like, this is the only kind of fruit you guys have? And one guy said, that's what's in season here. That's what's in season. So we're not genetically modifying anything and bringing things over. What we can grow right here on our earth and our ground, that's what's here. And they, they make dishes and they exist off of it. And that's why so many creative things come from you know, other cultures. So that's it. Okay, thank you, Joe, my manager. Okay. All right, thanks a lot, guys.